Greetings all, Ben here, East West. Uh, this Python uh, little series here, I'm going to concentrate on uh, building a, a trading system here that, or, or building and testing a trading system here that I found online from TradePro. So this is the um, the YouTube page that I've been looking at, which I'm going to borrow from. Now, he's run a bit of a test on a system using um, Market Cipher B. So I'm just going to, it's going to be in a few parts, but I'm basically just going to build this up and um, just try to replicate it and then run some tests on it uh, to see how it performs. So this is all borrowed from an indicator that's free on TradingView, uh, Vu Manchu's Cypher B Divergences Indicator. Uh, so this is basically how TradePro had uh, their settings set up. And I'm just going to try to replicate this in Python. So I'm just using this, uh, the Spider um, ETF here. And this is the 50 period uh, exponential moving average. And this is the 200 period exponential moving average. So the first thing I'm going to do here in part one is just to build this in Python and just try to replicate this. And once we've got it all going the way that looks like it should be going, uh, then we can move on to part two, which will be to build a bit of a test. So here we are with just a, a blank Jupyter Notebook. And the first thing we're going to do is just to import some libraries that we'll need. So I'm just going to import Pandas as PD. I'm just going to use Y Finance, though, uh, depending on how you want to use this as a test, you might want to grab some data from a different source because obviously the data from Y Finance can be a little bit... Um, not as not as good as, as other sources so you might even want to just download data directly from trading view or whatever source you want to grab a hold of but i'm just uh for example sake here i'm just going to use y finance and we just i'm just going to use pandas ta as ta so i'm just going to start by downloading um the the um spy etf data from on a daily i, I don't know if this is best for a daily but I'm just doing this for, for an example. Uh, so just from the start of, of, of 2020, so we'll just download that data. And then the first thing we need to do is to work out the wave trend. So I'm going to use the settings that were displayed in Vu Manchu's um, Cypher B settings on TradingView, but also, I, I, you know, I, I'm using the calculations that were done by Chris Moody, who's also known as Lazy Bear, and anyone who's used TradingView will probably know who he is because he's put out a ton of indicators in, in the early days and a um, bit of a legend, and he's got it all sorted out. So to actually work out the wave trend, and the wave trend is this blue area. So the, the, the green and red is the money flow. The blue waves are the wave trend. So to start off, I'm just going to work out these wave trends. So like I said, I'm just going to stick to his original calculations, which looks like Vu Manchu's done as well. Um, so we're just going to take two variables to start off with. So we're just going to uh, call N1 equal to 9, which is the channel length, and N2 equal to 12, which is the average length. So now I'm just going to basically add in a whole bunch of... There's probably a better way to do this in terms of more efficient coding. You could probably write functions and what have you, but... I'll just keep it simple. So even though it's clunky, it, it does work. So I'm going to start off by working out the wave trend MA source and just sticking with Chris Moody's original uh, coding. It's just, he called it AP. But basically, we just need the high plus the low plus the close divided by three. That's our uh, MA source. So next, he's worked out... Um, what he's referred to as the ESA, which is basically just an an EMA of um, the wave trend source, which we just worked out above, uh, and by the channel length, which is um, nine. Okay, so it's just the EMA of this uh, nine by nine periods. So that is what the ESA works out to be. The next line is what he called D, which is basically just an EMA. Uh, so we put absolute in here because we want a positive value. So it's just the absolute value of the uh, the source uh, minus 
the ESA, which we've just worked out here, <laughs> it gets a bit confusing, and the length of that EMA is set to 9, the channel length. So that is that line of code. And then the next calculation is what's called the CI, which is just obviously, um, you, you can see this here. So we're just taking, once again, the uh, wave trend source, and we're minusing the ESA, and then we're dividing that by 0 0.015 times by D. And that is effectively all we need to work out the wave trend indicator. So the next thing we've got to do is to work out uh, the first line or the or WT1. And that is simply an EMA of um, the CI that we've just worked out by the length of the average length, which is set to 12. So I know this is a bit of a mouthful, but this is how it's calculated. And then after we do that, we've just got to work out WT2. And that is a simple moving average this time of WT1 by three periods is how, even though when uh, I think when Chris Moody worked it out, he set it to four. Uh, in Fu Manchu's version, it's set to three. So I'm just trying to replicate that. So I'm going to set that to three. And with that, that's all we need to work out the wave trend indicator. So if we just run that cell and that's done. So next we need to work out the, it's, it's effectively the, uh, it's an RSI of the money flow. It's not the money flow indicator itself. It's, it's a little bit different. So let's just bring in what we need for this. So once again, I'm sticking to Fu Manchu's uh, settings. Uh, so the variables are we need the period, which is set to 60, the multiplier of the multi, which we've set to 150, and position Y, which is set to 2.5. Okay, and then after that, we need to do the calculation, which is as follows. So I'm just going to create yet another uh, column in, in the data frame, and we just want the simple moving average of the close minus the open divided by the high minus the low, and then we times that by the multi, okay, and the, the uh, period that we're using for that moving average is 60 periods. So the moving average of 60 periods. And then we're going to minus pos y, or pos 2.5. And that, that's all you need to do to work out the money flow RSI. So we can just run that cell. And then next we just need to simply bring in, because we're going to use that trade, we're going to look at that trade pro system. We just want to bring in the moving averages. So that's, that's straightforward. So we're just going to bring in the 50 period EMA and the 200 period EMA. So that is now done. Now, if we bring up the data frame, all this stuff you could probably drop. But I'm just going to leave it in there because I don't think it really matters. But you can see that we've got all the values that we need in here. Uh, so what I'm going to do just to clean this up is I'm actually going to round it. Um, and I'll just round it by two. I'll run that and then we'll bring up the data frame again and that's just a little bit neater and tidier. Uh, so basically now we've got uh, the indicator that we were, we were looking for, i.e. looking for this. We've got all the information now that we need uh, to, to, well, we've got it all. So this is all in that data frame. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to bring up uh, a visualization. So this is a little bit sticky and it's a little bit involved, but I just like to do the visualization so I can see uh, to make sure that everything looks the same. So if we come back here, I'll just cut that cell because we know it's all there. So uh, what we need to do now is we just need to bring in a couple more libraries. So I'm just going to import plotly.graph objects as geo and I'm just going to bring in NumPy as well. Um, we don't see, like really need it, but it's just for a little bit of visualization and, and presentation. It just looks a bit better when there's a step in here that we use NumPy with. So uh, just to start off, we all we need to do is create at first the candlestick chart. So that one's pretty straightforward. Um, we've we've done this before. It's just an open high lows open high low close candlestick chart and then we need to create some traces for the moving averages so I've just got uh, the 50 MA and the 200 MA I'm just going to stick with the blue and orange colors to match the chart uh, that I've got um, and that's all we need to do for that step now this next bit of code I'm not going to go 
highly into it because I've sort of stitched this together from from looking through Stack and and working with Chat GPT. But effectively, what we're what we're doing here is we're just coloring that uh, money flow line. So basically, if it's above zero, it's going to be green, and if it's below zero, it's going to be red. I didn't go into. I, I'm pretty sure you could do the shading, but to be honest, this is probably a step too far. Anyway, I just did this for presentation. So that is all that this code does is basically just deals with the colors of the line if it's above or below zero. And so next we're just going to create the main chart with the candlestick and the 50 MA and the 200 MA. And I've just put a line in here to make the chart a little bit bigger. So it'll sort of spill across the page a bit, um, but just to have a look to make sure that everything's working as we which we, we hoped it would, I've just made the chart a little bit bigger. It's not necessary, it's, it's strictly for presentation. So now we're just going to add the candlestick chart to our main to the to the fig that we've created, the figure. So we've created this fig here and we're putting the, the candlestick in there. And then also what we want to do is we want to put in that money flow RSI line uh, with those colours that we've just created as well. So I won't go over this code too much, but basically if you just copy this code through, um, this will just plot. You'll see when we, we do the plot, but this will plot that line, that money flow RSI line, green above zero um, and red below zero. So this bit of the code just ties into what we did through here. Okay. Uh, like I said, presentation only, it's not, not hugely important. Now this next bit of code, this bit here, all I've done, all this does is it just colors a black line across zero. So it's just a little bit easy to see where the zero line is uh, for the um, money flow RSI. So it's, like I said, it, once again, that's not hugely important. It's just a presentation thing. Okay, the next thing I've done here is I'm just going to calculate where the crosses occur in the wave trend lines. And then I'm just going to place dots where those crosses occur. So what, what I mean is that I'm just going to replicate these. Okay, these, these these dots occur when the... That's probably a little bit hard to see. Let me just change the color of this a little bit. That's probably a little bit better. So where the where the crosses occur in the, in the wave trend index, I'm just going to also place dots on the screen to show where those crosses are occurring. And so that's what what I'm basically doing here is just working out where the crosses above and below are. And then these two bits of code basically are just telling Python or Plotly where to put the dots and what color to make them. So if you just follow all this through, all this is doing is basically just working out where the lines cross and placing a dot on those crosses as per the chart that we looked at in TradingView. And so the next thing we've got to do is bring in the, just create the subplots for WT1 and WT2. So just, I'm going to make them light blue and dark blue, just so we can see what's going on with those. So we're just going to add those traces in. And that is all coming from what we worked out. Um, where were we? What we worked out, all this stuff that we worked out here. That's, it's basically just plotting these two values, okay, on the chart. So then we just need to bring in these two bits of code that tells us to, or tells the program to add those lines onto our subplot. So now we just need to define the layout with the subplots and we don't want a range slider because that, that's a pest. So layout equals go.layout, uh, that's just the title of the chart. You can change that to whatever. Um, this stuff here is just basically laying out the chart so that there's a main chart and a sub chart below it, which is kind of how we want it. Like it's like it's set up in Trading View, so that's just the logic to get that done. And so, lastly, we just need to update the layout, tell the code to update the layout so that this is all correct and and in place. And then we just need to show. So, hopefully, when we run this, uh, we will get the result we're after. So let's run it. And here we go. Okay. Now you can see. I remember I said I made the chart big. I'm just going to scroll across here. Okay, and then I'm just going to zoom in to say this section here. Okay, so here we can see we've got the the money flow uh, RSI. You know, we've got our zero line. We've got our wave index, which is 
it's got dots on it where it crosses and then we've just basically got the price chart so what I want to do now is I just want to compare this to TradingView to make sure that the values I'm getting are the same uh, meaning that you know I've, it's been calculated correctly so just visually this looks more or less right but what we want to do is see these values here I'm just looking at 52.47 uh, just move this out of the way a little bit and we've got uh, 52.47 uh, what's the other value here 42.14 and we've got 42.14 so that's great that looks right looks like the money flow RSI is at 12.75 uh, and that looks I oh know that's right 12.75 Okay, we know this is right. You can see the moving average is at four point. You, know, you can't quite see that. We've got uh, four twenty-five forty-nine. Um, sorry, this is a bit of a pest. Yep, that's right. And the two hundred four thirty point five three, and we got so that's right. So I think basically what that means is that I, I'm pretty. I feel pretty good that this what we can see here has been exactly replicated in Python using those calculations so I think at this point what we've got is the basic basic setup uh, and this is only part one this is I just wanted to get to this stage to show you that yeah it can be done so what I'm going to do in the next video uh, is look more deeply into the actual system that trade pro recommends well, I don't wouldn't say he's recommended he's just showing it okay and I'm not recommending it either I'm just basically going through the exercise to see how you would code it up as an example okay so you know it's probably important at this point to remember um, don't take anything that you see as you know a bona fide trading system this is all educational disclaimer disclaimer uh, I'm just uh, showing an example of how you might set up code in Python so that's it for this video i will do part two and depending on how well this is received if you like it hit the like hit the subscribe and if i get enough traction i will go through the process of trying to build the entire cipher b market cipher b indicator in python it will be a job so i'm not going to do it unless there's enough interest so uh, that's it for this video keep your eyes peeled for part two um, and then we'll, we'll go over uh, how we might code up testing this trading system. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.